today's Antioch Bible study, our meditation is centered on the Gospel of John. Very fascinating, to say the very least. Let us bow our heads to prayer as we um, begin our study. Father, we are nothing, and you are everything. We surrender to you that your Holy Spirit may illuminate your word, transform our lives, conform us into the image of your son, empower us by your spirit, and at the end, bless us in every way that your kingdom may be glorified and manifest through us. For it is in Jesus' awesome name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, let, let us go to John chapter 1, and we are reading from verse 43 to 51. John chapter 1, verse 43. The following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee. This is the New King James Version. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold an Israelite indeed, in whom is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathaniel answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree. Do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, Hereafter, you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascended and descended upon the Son of Man. Amen. Amen. Now, we follow the gospel writer as he warms up to his narrative. In our last study, Andrew had found his brother, Simon to whom our Lord Jesus declared, you are Simon, but you shall be Peter the rock. It is important to note that our Lord Jesus has a similar statement for each of us and to each of us. This is what you are the day I met you. This is what you will be, okay? The apostle Paul, he captured this in Romans 8, 29 to 30. For whom he did for know, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. We must note that we all are predestined. That's why Jesus could say you are, you will be, because you and I are predestined by God Almighty to be conformed into the image of Christ. So it doesn't matter what you are when you met Christ. You're going to the same place to be conformed into the image of Christ, to be solid, to be rock, to be steady, to stand firm 
your commitment and loyalty to Christ. That's why Jesus could say you are, you will be. The process of turning a Simon into a rock is contained in this revelation. You are, you will be. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the rock of ages. And no matter who we were when we came to Christ, whether we were bold, assertive, or phlegmatic and diffident, no matter what we were, his Holy Spirit works with us, in us and through us to conform us into the image of Christ so that his glory can be revealed through our lives. His invitation to those who struggle with this transformation, those who cannot find their way through this transformation, those who feel frustrated in their desire to be transformed into his image. He has this invitation. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn. It's a learning process. Learn from me. For I'm gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Now, the process of change and transformation must begin with everyone when we come to Christ. And this is the whole essence of 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You are, you will be. Everybody has their own path to that destiny. You are, you will be a new creation in Christ. And that's what this calling is all about. Okay, let us leave that and go to the calling of Philip. The following day, the Bible says in verse 43, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee and he found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Now, the calling of Philip is quite interesting. We are simply told that our Lord Jesus found Philip and said to him, follow me. And he did. What was he doing before that? We're not told. But he hailed from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Now, anybody visiting Israel will tell you that, uh, that the, the guides can take you to what was the site of the city of Bethsaida because the city had completely disappeared. The reason is to be found in Matthew eleven twenty. Then Jesus began to reproach the cities in which most of his deeds of power had been done because they did not repent. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the deeds of power done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, on the day of judgment, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? No, you will be brought down to Hades. For if the deeds of power done in you had been done in Sodom, it will have remained until this day. But I tell you, that on the day of judgment, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom than for you. Why is it necessary to mention this about the cities of Bethsaida, Chorazin, and Capernaum? The answer is that both Chorazin and Bethsaida disappeared completely because Jesus was offended by their refusal to listen to the gospel. Capernaum today is seen only 
in the broken walls of the synagogue where the man with the unclean spirit was delivered in Mark chapter 1, which is next door to the home of Peter. Now, this is history necessary to know so that those who reject Christ after having been exposed to the gospel of God's salvation and mercy through Christ will know the fate that awaits them if they persist in their rejection. So we, we're not just mentioning them for mentioning sake. <clears throat> it's to tell anyone who is resisting the gospel of mercy that then they would have themselves to blame when they face God's anger and judgment. Jesus cursed this city for their rejection and they disappeared. The Apostle Paul noted in Colossians 1.28 that it is necessary to teach everyone and necessary to warn everyone that whereas they are free to reject Christ, there will be consequences both in time and in eternity. Let everyone know that we are still under grace so long as we are alive and the trumpet is yet to sound. But if we die in our state of rejection of Christ or the trumpet sounds to wind up history, we can only have ourselves to blame. He who has ears to hear, like our Lord Jesus uh, sent to us from heaven, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. This is the time you can make changes. Okay, so we go to Philip himself. Who was he? We may not know so much because not so much was told us. But there is one thing we know is that he was learned. Learned enough to know the prophecies concerning the Messiah, which he revealed in inviting his friend Nathaniel. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. He knew what Moses said about the prophet that would come and what the prophet said about the coming Messiah. And that's why it, see, it behoves you and I also in church as Christians to be knowledgeable so that when we invite people or speak to them, we will speak to them from a position of knowledge and understanding of what the scriptures say. Now, here is what Moses said in Deuteronomy 18, 15, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own brothers. You must listen to him. This is what you requested from the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, let us continue to hear the voice of the Lord our God, or let us not continue to hear the voice of the Lord our God, or see his great fire any longer, so that we will not die. Then the Lord said to me, they have spoken well, I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers. I will put my words in his mouth, and he will tell them everything I command him. I will hold accountable whoever does not listen to my words that he speaks in my name. So this is what Moses said, and Philip was aware of it, that there is a prophet to come, a prophet that is being expected. And here is Isaiah, in a more familiar scripture in Isaiah 9. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice. From that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So it is also important to note that Nathaniel to whom he was also speaking. Nathaniel was knowledgeable. We see this in his response. 
And Nathanael said to him, hmm, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. Come and see is at the very heart of invitational witnessing. I might not be able to explain it all, but come for your own personal encounter. Indeed, I may not be able to answer all your theological questions, but you can come for your own personal encounter with the man of Galilee. That reminds me of my conversion to Christ on June 28, 1970. I remember I went to that scripture union guest Sunday, purely out of curiosity. I simply wondered what made young people like my sister who were in scripture union turn their backs to the world as it were and lived and dressed in what we used to call strange ways. What manner of doctrine was this? That was why I accepted to attend, come and see. But as I was leaving the meeting and heading home, I had my life transforming encounter to our Lord Jesus Christ, who instructed me to go and write my name down as one of those who accepted him. I obeyed the voice and went and wrote my name down. That night, I had another encounter. The voice said, read John 6.20, read John 6.20 in a dream. And that scripture said, it is I, be not afraid. And that was it. I did not look back again. Philip said to Nathaniel, Come and see for yourself. Come and experience Jesus of Nazareth. And that's the invitation to everyone under the sound of my voice. Come and meet the Savior. Come and receive him into your life. And he will give you his own revelations of himself, his own experiences. He will, through the, 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 your, your life, show you himself. It's amazing. I can, I can keep talking about Testimonies upon testimonies of what Christ has done for me in my journey of life. Now, we come to um, um, Nathaniel's response. Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Well, one could say, well, it's part, part joke, part serious, <laughs> uh, because um, 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 if it, it's like saying, oh, uh, Jesus of Nazareth from my village, and I'm like, from our village, no, no, you know. So, so, so Nathaniel himself was also knowledgeable, and he knew that Jesus uh, uh, would come from Bethlehem, not from, not from Nazareth. The reason for that question is in Micah 5.2. Micah chapter 5, verse 2. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me, the one to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth are from of old, from everlasting. So Nathaniel Good. knew the prophecies. He knew that Jesus was going to come. The Messiah was coming from Bethlehem and not from Nazareth. And knowing because... We are told that Nazareth of those days was populated by pagans, and so and so Nathaniel was right to ask uh, uh, um, Philip, hmm, <laughs> "What good can come out of this our Nazareth?" Now, when Herod called the elders of the Jews to ask about the Messiah, he got the same answer in Matthew chapter two verse three. When King Herod heard this. He was frightened and all Jerusalem with him and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people. He inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, you Bethlehem in the land of Judah are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Now, this was the argument amongst the people attending the feast of tabernacles in John chapter seven, verse 40. When they heard these words, some in the crowd said, this is really the prophet. 
Others said, this is the Messiah. But some asked, surely the Messiah does not come from Galilee, does he? Has not the scripture said that the Messiah is descended from David and comes from Bethlehem, the village where David lived? So there was a division in the crowd because of him. Some of them wanted to arrest him, but no one laid hands on him. Now, the Jewish elders made the same point to Nicodemus when he put in his very tame support for our Lord Jesus among his peers in John chapter 7, verse 50. Nicodemus, who had gone to Jesus before, and who was one of them, asked, Our Lord does not judge people without first giving them a hearing to find out what they are doing, does it? They replied, Surely you are not also from Galilee, are you? Search, and you will see that no prophet is to arise from Galilee. Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Echoes the skepticism of those who knew the law and the prophets and what was said about the Messiah. Our Lord Jesus was born in Bethlehem to fulfill prophecy. The birth was aided by the order of Augustus Caesar, who ordered the census. Joseph and Mary lived in Nazareth from where they went to Bethlehem for the census. But after the birth of our Lord Jesus and all the accompanying ceremonies, the Bible said they returned to Nazareth, their city. In Luke chapter 2, 39, when they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Now, they could easily have resettled in Bethlehem with the gold supplied by the wise men from the east. But with that treasure, they relocated temporarily to Egypt and on their return, went back to Nazareth for fear of Achilles, the tetrarch of Judea, son of Herod the Great. Okay, just to, just to fill, fill in the, 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 the history. So you, 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 you and I know, have an idea why all this. Now, this discourse revealed that both Philip and Nathanael were knowledgeable people. They were among the few of the many who were studied believers in Judaism. Now, that should be a challenge to us. We too must be studied believers in Christ who not only know the scriptures about his first coming, but are also familiar with what the Bible has to say about his second coming. So the day does not take us unawares. As our Lord Jesus Christ said in Luke 21, 34, watch out. Don't let your hearts be dulled by carousing and drunkenness and by the worries of this life. Don't let that day catch you unaware like a trap. For that day will come upon everyone living on the earth. Verse 30 says, keep alert at all times and pray that you might be strong enough to escape these coming horrors and stand before the Son of Man. Okay, now let us move, move on to Nathaniel's encounter with our Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 47, when Jesus saw Nathaniel coming toward him. He said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathaniel asked him, where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Now that's a very awesome testimony. Behold an Israelite in whom there is no deceit, no guile. That is an awesome, awesome testimony by no one else but our Lord Jesus Christ himself who sees and knows the heart of all men. Now, from the book of Samuel, we are told that God looks at our hearts to know our deep motives and motivations. 
Nathaniel. This was what Samuel was told by God Almighty in the home of Jesse when he went to make a king. And he was going to crown Eliab, the firstborn. And God said to him, don't look outside. I look inside. I see the heart. The Bible has quite a bit to say about guile and deceit. In whom there is no deceit. In Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 12, I will live in your midst a meek and humble people. And they shall trust in the name of the Lord. The remnant of Israel shall do no unrighteousness. They shall speak no lies. Nor shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. For they shall feed their flocks and lie down. And no one shall make them afraid. That's, when they, that's how we pray for a revival. So that the people of God will be in this state that the prophet Zephaniah was talking about. You know, they will, they will do no unrighteousness. They will speak no lies. There shall be no deceit found in their tongue. That's, that's what the church, the body of Christ, should represent on the earth. Now, it is quite conceivable that Nathaniel's meditations under the fig tree was part of his education on how to walk in the fear of God. King David declared in Psalm 34, verse 11, come you children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is the man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. So it is important for you and I to, to study the Bible so that our lives will be transformed, so that we will walk in the fear of the Lord, so that the kingdom of God will be manifest through us. Now, but that knowledge of Nathaniel impacted him powerfully enough for him to confess Jesus Christ as his Lord. The moment in that encounter, he said, you are the Christ, the son of God, the coming king. John 1, 49, Nathaniel answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Now, just like the woman of Samaria, our Lord Jesus' knowledge, his knowledge of Nathaniel, impacted him powerfully. If we take a brief stop at that well of Sychar, Jesus said to the woman, go call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you have well said, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands. And the one whom you now have is not your husband. In that you spoke truly. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. This is the manifestation of the word of knowledge. You have had five husbands. The woman immediately sensed that she was in the presence of divinity. The same thing happened to Nathaniel to make him declare, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. He was easily persuaded that our Lord Jesus was indeed the son of God, who was and is of one substance with the father, and who, like the catechism says, is very God of very God. So it is important for, for, for you and I to, to seek the Lord, Seek the community of his people. Seek fellowship with saints so that our lives will be built up. And perchance, word of knowledge will come revealing secrets in our heart that will help us to, to be transformed. Oh, I have been in meetings where 
word of knowledge uh, 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 came forth. You know, uh, 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 a man once, 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 uh, once uh, was, was told was coming. He was, he was complaining of so many things, and the spirit of God immediately quickened to me that this man is an adultery. You know, I said, but all these your complaints, you are in adultery. He said, yes, I'm, I'm trying to sort it out. But at least that will help you to go home to know that the secrets of people's heart can be revealed by God. Pastor Elton told us of a, of a man who came to church and the word of knowledge came. Brother so and so, you were in adultery yesterday. True or false, he said it's true. So you see, if that happened regularly in church, you know, people will be careful. You know, so they will come to church not only expecting to hear prophecies about um, the contracts that they're going to win, but if they are in, living in iniquitous states, yes, or they, their life is iniquitous, that also should be revealed so that men will walk like the Apostle Paul said, when, they, when the secrets of their heart are revealed, you know, then they will know that God is among you. Then they will know that the worship and the fear of God is for real, for real. Jesus said to Nathaniel, you haven't seen anything yet. You will see greater things. And that should be encouraging to you and I as we come to Christ, as we embrace him, that yes, there's so much, there's so much to be revealed to us as individuals in Christ. John chapter 150 then, Jesus answered and said to him, because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree. Do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, most assuredly I say to you, hereafter you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending. On the Son of Man. You will see greater things. The moment we surrender our lives to Christ, the door to deeper revelations and experiences of the reality of God in the life of a man will unveil and become available to us. The door to the knowledge of God, the deeper knowledge of God, the mysteries, what our Lord Jesus Christ calls the mysteries of the kingdom of God. The door will open. What depth of revelation is this? Our Lord Jesus, he went to Jacob's ladder. Because Nathaniel is a man who studied the Bible, so he will know the story of Jacob's ladder. You know, the Bible says in that story that Jacob dreamed. Behold, a ladder was set up on the earth and his top reached to heaven. And there the angels of God Genesis 28, verse 12. And there, angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you, your descendants. Also, your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and the east, to the north and the south. And in you and in your seed, all the families, the earth shall be blessed. Behold, I'm with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I've done what I've spoken to you. And Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. Jacob didn't have his experience in church. Mm -mm. <laughs> he had his experience on his journey. It was not a special holy place. This is where, where how you and what you and I need to know that you can encounter God Almighty where you are. Oh, yes. You know, you don't have to be in a special place. You don't have to be in a special gathering. You can encounter him where you are. And by 
using this ladder, okay, by using this ladder experience, Jesus was speaking to Nathaniel about the awesome importance of personal encounters with the Lord God Almighty. Oh, there is nothing like that. You know, somebody said, um, somebody said that a man came to a gentleman and said to him, oh, 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 there is no God, there is no God. And then the gentleman said to him, you're too late. I spoke with him yesterday. <laughs> That's the power of a personal encounter. He said, I spoke with him yesterday. You're too late. So Jesus was saying to Nathaniel, you know, you will gain, you will experience a deeper personal encounters with God. Okay? Because that encounter changed Jacob. Then Jacob rose early in the morning, took the stone that he had put at his head, set it up as a pillar, and poured oil on top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel, but the name of that city had been lost previously. Then Jacob made a vow. He said, if God will be with me, keep me in this way that I'm going. Give me bread to eat, clothing to put on, so that I come back to my father's house in peace. Then the Lord shall be my God. And this stone which I have set as a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will surely give a tenth to you. Jacob made a vow. Jacob made a solid commitment because of his encounter, personal encounter. God was saying to me, Lord Jesus was saying to Nathaniel, you would have a lot more encounters about the reality of God in the life of a person. And everybody needs that so that their faith will become solid, as solid as a rock, unshakable, so that the wisdom of God will be distilled to their hearts so that they will love God with their whole heart. Our Lord Jesus was saying to Nathaniel, the kind of experience and encounter you will receive subsequently will bring you into a deeper covenant relationship with God that will completely transform your life, transform your worldview, transform your destiny, transform your motives, your ambitions. Yes, everybody needs that encounter to turn around totally. That is the testimony of any person and every person who has sought the Lord with all their heart. The prophet Jeremiah said so in Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me. But you have to search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you, says the Lord. And I will bring you back from your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations, from all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord. To bring you to the place from which I caused you to be carried away captive. In other words, whatever may have transpired in the past, the moment we begin to seek the Lord with all our hearts, change, transformation, restoration, full redemption, will become our portion. Amen. That is the awesome, awesome reality of what Nathaniel experienced with Jesus. One more thing before um, we close. And that was on Nathaniel's status. Was he an apostle? Now, it was only John that called him Nathaniel. The two gospel writers that gave the list of the apostles, they called him Bartholomew. As we read from Matthew chapter 10, verses 2 to 4. Now, these are the names of the 12 apostles, special messengers. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother. James, son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. Philip and Bartholomew, they both always go together, Philip and Bartholomew. Which, um, uh, uh, um, 
in parentheses, um, the amplified version put Nathaniel, Thomas Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Judas, not Iscariot. Okay? Simon the Canaanite and Judas Iscariot, he also betrayed. Now, this is the, the list from Mark chapter 3. And he appointed 12 to continue to be with him and that he might send them out to preach as apostles or special messengers and to have authority and power to heal the sick and to drive out demons. They were Simon, his son named him Peter, James, son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James. And so named them Bonages, that is sons of thunder. And then Andrew and Philip and Bartholomew, Nathaniel and Matthew and Thomas. So, so um, uh, um, um, the, the, the all two gospel writers of Matthew and Mark, they called him Bartholomew. But in the gospel of John, he remains Nathaniel. We read about this again in um, John chapter 21, from verses 1 to 3. After this, Jesus let himself be seen and revealed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And he did it in this way. There were together Simon Peter and Thomas called the twin and Nathanael from Cana of Galilee, also the sons of Zebedee and two others of his disciples. Okay, Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, we are coming too. So they went out, got into the boat and throughout that night, they caught nothing. So John, maybe, maybe for some reason, he prefers Nathanael to Bartholomew. Um, somebody had said that um, the name Bartholomew really may not be his name, may just be uh, uh, um, um, uh, the way that some people answer, you know, in some parts of Nigeria, you know, uh, uh, Shagari, uh, uh, then it's not really his name, it's the name of his town. So Ba Tholomew's son of to Ptolemy or Ptolemy or something, whatever the Hebrew is, you know, son of. So, so that's not, that may not be his real name, but that's what everybody calls him. But uh, perhaps because John was there at the beginning, he insists on calling him Nathaniel. So the important thing about these last verses of John chapter one is that those who met Jesus, they stopped to bring others. You know, that is, that is the lesson of it. They, 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 because they are studied believers, uh, um, Andrew, of course, Andrew uh, brought his brother, but Philip brought his friend, Nathaniel. He brought his friend, someone he felt would benefit from an encounter with Jesus. Someone he felt was religious and needed to have an encounter with the Savior. Someone he felt was hungry for the truth of God's word. Yes. That's our responsibility. Now, let, let me close with a little uh, a note uh, on this. Um, Nathaniel was one of the 12 original apostles of Jesus Christ. It is written about him in the Gospels and Book of Acts. Most Bible scholars believe that Nathaniel and Bartholomew were the same person. The name Bartholomew is a family designation, meaning son of Tolmai. Nathaniel means gift of God. In Synoptic Gospels, the name Bartholomew always follows Philip in lists of the 12. In the Gospel of John, Bartholomew is not mentioned at all. Nathaniel is listed instead after Philip. John also describes Nathaniel's call by Philip. The two may have been friends from Nathaniel's cause. Nazareth, can anything good come from there? Seeing the two men approach Jesus, approach Jesus calls Nathaniel a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false, no deceit, and reveals that he saw Nathaniel sitting under a fig tree before Philip called him. So I want you and I to know that wherever we are, whatever we are doing, Jesus knows and he sees us and he wants us to come to him so that he will transform us and make us his true disciples so that our lives Listen to this, my brother. Our lives will count in time and eternity. 
Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Doctor. You know, today, I think the theme is around the power of a personal encounter with, with the Savior. You want to highlight that again, sir? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, because um, um, Andrew called Peter and Jesus gave him uh, a word that changed his life. You're Simon, you will be called Peter. Philip met Jesus, he brought his friend Nathaniel and Jesus said to him, you are an Israelite in whom there is no guy, acknowledged the life he had lived before then so that greater things and told him greater things are going to come to you. That encounter is what everybody needs. I've given you a brief story of my own experience. After that day, I was never the same again. Everything took bearing from that relationship. And so it is important that if you have not a personal encounter, you can kneel down where you are and say, Lord Jesus, I want to know you. That's all you need to do. And then he will, he will reveal himself. To you. He knows exactly what to do and how to do it so that you can have a deep personal relationship with him. And then nothing else will matter. No arguments, no invitations and seductions, none will matter anymore. Because you have a personal revelation of your Savior. Thank you, sir. And that also would form the basis for your personal evangelistic ethos. And that's yes, because if you, have, if you have experienced him, you want those you love and those on your friends to also have an encounter with him for their own sakes. Not only for time, but also for eternity. Yes. In fact, it is love that makes people go out of their way to make sure that those they know have come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. So important, you know. It would be a horrible tragedy to see friends and family going to hell, and yet you had the opportunity to tell them. That's the real challenge. But what um, Andrew and Philip, what they have done for us is to say to us, don't wait, don't wait. Go straight to your friends and, and invite them to come and know the Lord. And so, so the question to ask now, sir, is that why is it that after we've been following this gospel for long enough, we stop telling people, we stop inviting people to come to know him? How do we restart going well, back to that first love, as it were? We, we need to read the parable of the sower. Everybody has to read and reread the parable of the sower, okay? You pass the first group that by the wayside, okay? So these are not the people you're talking about. You pass the second group by the st hard stones, okay? Effervescent believers, excited and excitable, but no depth. But where the danger is, is in the third group. The cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, Choke the word. That's where the problem is. And so everybody has the opportunity to evaluate their faith. What is happening to me? You know, I have a personal experience. When I was, um, when I was um, an undergraduate, I did vacation job at Radio Nigeria here in Lagos. The first time I came, I, I literally quote unquote, turn the place upside down. I even went to the DG to request a venue for fellowship, you know? There was no way I didn't go. I wasn't afraid of anybody. Then I came again the next year. By that time I had drawn into all kinds of challenges, you know? I can remember very clearly, one of the ladies in the office that I, I used to work because I was in the features department, you know, even though I worked in various departments as a freelance, one of the ladies said, doctor, you know, 
I wasn't graduated then, but doctor, what has happened to you? Last year when you came here, you turned this place upside down. This year, you're here. Nobody's hearing anything from you. I woke up. That woke me up. <laughs> so you see, the Bible says the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches. So, so, so there were so many things going on in my life at that time. And, and they choked that enthusiasm. You know? And so if that is your own experience, you have to go back again and say, Lord, rekindle that fire, please. You know, because desire controls everything. You know, Lord, please rekindle that fire. I want to be evangel evangelical again, evangelistic, spreading the word. You know, I wrote so many tracts. Look, I told you before, I wrote tracts. I wrote for pregnant women. I wrote for those going for surgery. I wrote for those uh, 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 um, um, in medicine. I wrote tracts for every group in the hospital. <laughs> and I published and I was distributing. So, so, so we have to get back to that fire again. To get back to that fire again. Very good, sir. Can you pray for everyone that that fire will fall upon us all? Again yes, absolutely. So that we may go absolutely. about our father's business. Absolutely. Shall we pray? Father, we studied Andrew and Philip. They didn't wait. They didn't waste time. They went in search of family and friends. Oh, Lord, our God, we bow at your feet. And we ask that it may please to release upon us everyone under the sound of my voice. That quickening fire, oh God. That we may again begin to go here and there and everywhere sharing the gospel of the kingdom of our Savior. Yes, and Lord. inviting men and women, particularly invitational witnessing, which everybody can do, inviting men and women to come and hear the word of God so that the kingdom of God will prosper in their lives and through them. Oh, make us very passionate for this, oh God. Yes. That heaven will record the numbers of men and women we have brought to fellowship, brought to hear the gospel, brought to hear the word of God. And their lives have been transformed as a result. May that be our testimony individually, oh God. For it is in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you, Doctor. Amen. Okay, Brother Emmy. Okay, Thomas. Thomas, go on. Go ahead. So, good evening, everyone, once again. Okay, it's time for offering. You can see the details on the screen now, and I've also posted the chat group for those of us outside the country. For the project, we have 50-800-99709. That's for the project. For the offerings, we have um, 50-800-5643. And for careless CSR, we have 40-1144-5486. Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, we thank you for today. We are so grateful for the word that has come unto us. Father, in thanksgiving and appreciation, we bring an appreciation, we bring our offerings unto you today. Father, we ask, O oh God, be glorified in all we give today in Jesus' name. Above Amen. all, we ask that you be glorified in all we do, that these words we've heard will bear the desired and appropriate fruits in the name of Jesus. To you be all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. Um, I'd like to share with you very briefly the other meetings that we have. Um, we, we pray every morning at 5.30 a.m. And we also pray in the evenings at 6.30 p.m. Every evening except on Monday, where we have the Antioch Bible study. And on Wednesday, we, play, we pray at 12 noon for all the nations of the world by name. And our, the theme of our prayer is revival. We believe that with the revival, if the children of God will stand up and be counted, then the whole world will stand up, uh, right side up once again in the name of Jesus. 
So please join us to pray. And then on Saturday, especially we have the uh, KLS worship experience, but this uh, last Saturday of the month, we have um, the theme of love and submission. The doctor is uh, conducting a workshop for relationships and it's a very interesting workshop. We can all benefit whatever stages our relationships are in, pre-marriage, in marriage, post-marriage, wherever you find yourself. Uh, doctor is helping us to rebuild our lives on biblical principles for good relationships that will glorify God. So please join us at 8 a.m. And uh, it's a physical meeting, but if you're not able to join us in person, you may join on Zoom at 8 a.m. on Saturday morning. We're now going to go into a time of prayer, and we're going to start off by our global worship. Afterwards, we'll pray for our, our nation, Nigeria. Prayer changes things, as our brother always says, prayer changes things. No matter what is going on in our nation, Nigeria, we believe that the beginning of that solution or the solution to our problems is for us to pray. So join us as we pray for Nigeria, and then we'll pray for all the nations of the world, all the continents of the world. We'll pray against the LGBTQ agenda. We'll pray against the one world government agenda. We'll pray for the return of the conquering Messiah. We're going to spend some time giving thanks to God for deliverance uh, for, for us in Nigeria and globally against the scourge of COVID. And then doctor will be on hand to give us a closing blessing and a benediction. So please join us. We should be done within the hour. God bless you. Amen. Sister Anne. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us pray. We come to you, ancient of days, the God of all heaven and earth. We worship you, O King of all the ages, who does all things after the counsel of your own will. We proceed right now to wash ourselves in the blood of Jesus Christ, your Son, and to clothe ourselves fully in his righteousness, as we thank you for all your love and mercy. O God, we acknowledge that we are most undeserving of all your love and we're deeply grateful for your kindness in accepting us in your beloved. Let us all take a moment now to wash ourselves in the blood of Jesus Christ, of every filthiness of flesh and spirit, and to clothe ourselves fully in his righteousness. <laughs> In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. We approach your throne of grace in humility, with gratitude, confessing the virtue and the power in the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, that has made us accepted in your most holy presence. O oh Lord our God, we thank you and we bless your glorious name. Amen. Amen. We take our global praise, our authorization is Psalm 100, verses 4 and 5. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord Amen. is good, his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Yeah. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God, for he is good. For his, his mercy endures forever. forever. <clears throat> we give thanks unto the Lord who created the heavens and the earth. For, for his, his mercy endures forever. forever. Oh, we give thanks unto the Lord whose throne is established in righteousness, and truth, and who rules in the affairs of men with justice, with holiness, and purity. For oh, his, his mercy, mercy is forever. forever. 
Oh, let us give thanks unto the Lord who forgives us all our sins and heals all our diseases and who keeps us safe from all plagues and pestilences like Ebola and COVID-19. For oh, his mercy, glory forever. Oh, we give thanks unto the Lord who woke us up this morning and saw us individually through our day showering us with his love and kindness for his mercy. His mercy. So so forever, forever, forever. Forever. Let us give thanks unto the Lord who satisfies our mouths with good things and daily loads us with benefits and renews our youth like that of an eagle. For his for mercy. Mercy. Yes. Oh, let us give thanks unto the Lord our God who saved us and filled us with his Holy Spirit and commissioned us to go spread the gospel of the kingdom of God and his Christ at home here in Nigeria and to the uttermost parts of the earth for his mercy. For his mercy endures forever. forever. We give thanks unto the Lord God Almighty who gave us a careless vision and commission to raise men and women who will walk daily in the footprints of Jesus for his mercy. For his mercy endures forever. 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 Finally, let us give thanks to the one and only true God who has positioned us and commissioned us to send forth the message of saints walking in the footsprints of Jesus to all the seven continents of the world, Africa and our 58 nations, Australia and Oceania and their 26 nations, Asia and our 45 nations, Europe and our 54 nations, North America and our 46 nations, South America and her 15 nations and the dwellers in Antarctica. For oh, his mercy, mercy endures forever. 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 Amen. May it please you, O Lord our God, to receive our praise and our thanks. Thou King of all the ages, the immortal, the invisible God, the creator and possessor of all heaven and earth the giver of life and all things that are good, who dwell in majesty on high. Receive all the praise and thanks that is due to you alone. For in the mighty and precious name of Jesus the Christ, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. We take our global worship. Revelation chapter 4, verses 8 to 11. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within. They do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the twenty and four elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne saying, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things and by your will they exist and were created. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Our Father and our God, we come to join the four living creatures the four and twenty elders with the entire community of angels and archangels to give you glory for you are God alone, the immortal, the invisible, the God only wise, the beginning and end of all things, the ancient of days who dwells in light unapproachable, the great I am that I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, therefore, O oh Lord our God, we come to join the hosts of heaven to sing holy Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. We bow our hearts in humble adoration with the four and twenty elders to say, 
you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will and for your pleasure, we all exist and were created. Dear Lord God Almighty, we come to give you thanks and praise and worship. We come to give you honor, adoration and majesty for who you are and for what you do every moment to sustain the universe and the entire creation and us here gathered by your mercy. Oh, Father of grace and glory, your will is our command as we worship your majesty and holiness singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. May it please you, O Lord our God, to conform us into the image of your Son, Jesus Christ, by your Spirit, so that we may walk this earth the same way he walked it. We may do your will the way he did it, with love, loyalty, and obedience, as we walk daily in the fullness of his power and authority, just the way he did, to establish your kingdom and the rule and reign of your Son, Jesus Christ, in all the 244 nations on this earth, and to dismantle all opposition to your kingdom in every nation on earth by the resurrection power conferred upon us as your saints to the exclusive glory of your most holy name in the matchless name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Cabasus, the local 